The following is a response to Shintai Reviews' video, Story vs. Gameplay, which will be linked in the description bar below. As I have stated on my blog, I am a holistic reviewer. This means that I have to take in everything as a whole instead of reviewing the value of individual parts. Ergo, a good character, story element, or mechanic only matters to how I view a work relative to the work's entirety. Furthermore, I feel that genres and mediums are part of a continuum, so I'm not going to use a special method to review one thing and not another, like how some treat video game RPGs as a special thing that can't be approached the same way as other games. In some ways, this is correct, but in others, it's a case of people treating the genre as if it's in a vacuum. I illustrate this sort of thing not just to demonstrate where I'm coming from, but also why I believe that the versus in the title of your video is something of a misnomer. Versus carries the connotation of being against or adversarial, being based on the identically spelled Latin word for against, obviously. So the phrase story versus gameplay carries the implication that you must focus on one or the other, and that is something I do not hold to. Being 50-50, 60-40, 70-30 one way or the other, all of this carries the idea that you have to focus on one side, or you have to treat them all equally, but at the same time having them in separate laces. Furthermore, if I may comment upon the commenters, figuratively speaking, I find that using the term story is somewhat inaccurate. A more appropriate term would be narrative, though I will be using story on occasion through this video. As merely viewing the story in and of itself does it a disservice. More often than not, it is how the story is told that matters as much as the story itself. This is partially why I've always found buzzword criticisms a repeat annoyance for reasons I'll explore in another video. What I'll say for now is that it's easy to pick apart individual pieces of a story and say, this is great, or this sucks. I often am of the opinion that whether I like or don't like the story and or gameplay is irrelevant to the axis in question. To say, my not liking a story has little bearing on whether a story is actually good. For example, Logan's Run is not a bad story or a bad film, but for me, at least when it comes to the film, it is an unpleasant one. In essence, a story is more than just a series of dialogue exchanges or the like. To demonstrate my point, many talk about story without taking into consideration narrative mechanics and how they integrate with the experience. In addition, in my observations I've found that story is viewed in video games by many people as one would observe story in a book or a film. To say it is viewed in a vacuum and the idea of narrative being part of the mechanics or anything that does not allow for the three-act narrative flow is dismissed out of hand as bad story. In the same breath, gameplay is glossed over and given only the barest amount of detail, without any thought of what the attempt being made with the mechanic, its ability to capitalize on its ideas, motifs, themes, or comparative mechanics. Just where it is broadly wrong or right by the person's own viewpoints. To illustrate my position, let's take the story-gameplay axis and look at one game from each end of the spectrum, one focused on gameplay and one focused on story. First, let's look at Dear Esther, a game that focuses on story but does not focus much on gameplay. Like certain art films, Dear Esther uses heavy amounts of atmosphere and a long immersive crawl through narration and ambient music. Every visual aspect is designed to present a specific mood. Trouble is, the gameplay and that narrative is like a magic trick, both in the positive and the negative. The enjoyment is centered around your ability to suspend disbelief and take in the world that's being presented to you. But once you understand the magic trick itself, there's little to fall back on and the whole experience comes off as superficial. One could watch a let's play of the game and lose very little in the way of an experience, made all the worse by the realization of how little your input i.e. your choice, matters. Also, there's little reason to return to the game after you finish the story. On the other side of the fence, consider Pac-Man, a game that is heavy on gameplay but light on story. While the gameplay is simplistic, merely running around and collecting dots, there is a fun factor that is derived from figuring out the patterns, map placement, speeds of the ghosts, and spawning points of fruits, even if none of these things you're consciously thinking of. As Ralph Koster pointed out in his book A Theory of Fun, Fun is derived from understanding and overcoming the challenges presented in a game that you're playing, even if the overcoming aspect isn't necessarily a victory. On the other side, however, there's little in the way of connective tissue between levels and progression besides a steadily rising difficulty. Observing these extremes, one might conclude that the story or gameplay is more important, based on what you value in a game. In truth, neither is more important. The best possible approach is the marriage of narrative and gameplay mechanics, combining the two halves into a greater whole. Ultimately, creating a good story should be less important than a story that blends into its narrative properly. This brings me to the latter part of my video's title, The Arrogance of Assumption. 
If that part seems a little hostile, it's a hostility that is built up from over 20 years of observation in various forms of enthusiast press and communities. I detest with a passion this idea that many have about having a rigid formula of what makes a good or bad game both in general and in specific franchises or genres, even if the people in question don't outright say it. To me, it is the height of arrogance and hubris to say that a game must follow these guidelines based solely on the fact that they are guidelines that a person happens to like. In the matter of story, this includes plot elements, narrative lines, and the like that are vaguely placed under the blanket of good or bad making no effort to take an objective stance on the matter before adding their own subjectivity. It comes off as someone who cannot escape their comfort zone and focus solely on their discomfort. A work should be taken on its own terms, not on what should be done, as there is no perfect Pepsi to be found. Link to what I mean in the crotch bar. There are many kinds of genres and subgenres for many kinds of games, and many ways to experience stories in and out of the medium of play. One's liking or disliking is ultimately a motive and not based on anything objective. This is why I consider the line, I feel, to be the weakest means of presenting points about a work, doubly so if no objective evidence is brought forward. In the end, though, I'm just a heretical monk.